Welcome to the St. Michael Lenten podcast series. My name is Mary Lesman, and I'll be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Lent is called to more. This Lent, find guidance and hope in the example of Christ as we are led toward the ultimate hope of the resurrection. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 1 to 16. He left that place and went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan. And crowds again gathered around him. And as was his custom, he again taught them. Some Pharisees came, and to test him, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God has made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs." Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Here ends the reading. Mark's account of Jesus' teaching on divorce is what we call in the biz a hard teaching. Each time this passage is read, many of us cringe, either feeling assaulted by it directly or worrying that others do. To test Jesus, the Pharisees ask him about the law and divorce. The law of Moses allowed that a man could divorce his wife. Jesus, as he so often does when answering these questions, doesn't refer to the law, but to God's intention. God's intention, he says, is that a man shall be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together Let no one separate. Then later in the passage, Jesus goes even further to say, whoever divorces their spouse and marries another commits adultery. This is an extremely hard and painful message to hear straight from Jesus' mouth if you or someone you love has been a party to divorce. I will not try to explain away Jesus' words. He says what he says. I will point out that what is clear is that Jesus is looking to honor and protect relationship while showing mercy to the most vulnerable, which is consistent with all his teachings. In Jesus' time, women were extremely vulnerable when divorced. And while there was some debate about this, the common practice was that a man could divorce his wife for any reason. The main point Jesus is making here is not that divorce is always the wrong answer. It is that he is serious about marriage. What Jesus is saying is that it is God's intention when two people marry that they become joined in a sacramental, covenantal way such that they are no longer two separate people. Not in an I'm no longer me, I lose myself as a unique child of God way, but in a Venn diagram way. There's that which is me, there's that which is you, and we are joined in an overlapping, interconnected way that cannot simply be undone. This is especially true when you think of the effects of divorce on children, families, in-laws, and friends. We are not being truthful if we don't admit that all of our relationships are affected by divorce. And so whether we're talking about counseling or increased compromise or a willingness to be more present and engaged, our marriages are worth fighting for. In an environment where the commitment of marriage can be taken too lightly, 
where the desire to maintain an unfettered self limits our ability to submit ourselves to a spouse, where we have been told that we can free ourselves of the commitment of marriage when it no longer feels fun or a better offer comes along. It is good to be reminded of the seriousness of the covenantal sacrament of marriage. But the reality is that I don't know one person who was happy to get a divorce, for whom it did not cause great pain, great guilt, a questioning of oneself, and a feeling of failure. Nobody enters a marriage intending it will end in divorce. Sometimes the need to end a marriage appears clear, abuse, addiction, adultery. Sometimes it is a slower, vague movement. God's desire is that we flourish. Marriages where partners begin harming one another, disrespecting one another, where the pathology of the relationship spills over into relationships with other loved ones. This is an environment where flourishing is impossible. At this point, divorce is the funeral for a marriage that has already died. In a broken world, divorce is sometimes necessary. And the hope is that, in repentance and healing, the two may move forward on new paths toward flourishing. This is a hard teaching for us to hear, but God respects us enough to hold up His ideal for our relationships, even as He knows that we will struggle and fail to live into this ideal. In the end, divorce does not separate us from God any more than our other brokenness and sin separate us from God. And so we hold to our hope in a gracious God who forgives our failings and works His healing within us that we might experience the new life He has prepared for us. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, You alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.